Let's see a non-standard proof that the square root of 2 is irrational, and see how it leads to rational approximations of the square root of 2. Let's suppose that the square root of 2 is rational. That means that square root of 2 is a divided by b, where a and b are both positive integers. Recall that the square root of 2 is the hypotenuse of a right isosceles triangle with both legs equal to 1. You can verify this using the Pythagorean theorem. Because the square root of 2 is a divided by b, we can scale this triangle by b, and we end up with a right isosceles triangle with legs of length b and a hypotenuse of square root of 2 times b. But because square root of 2 times b is a, that means that there is a right isosceles triangle with leg lengths b and a hypotenuse of a. The lower left angle in this triangle is a 45 degree angle. Now let's use the right side of the triangle as a radius to sweep out a circular arc that intersects the hypotenuse. The intersection point on the hypotenuse splits the hypotenuse into lengths of a minus b and b. Next draw a perpendicular to that circular arc that intersects the lower leg. This line segment has created a new right triangle, and because one angle is 45 degrees, so is the other one. So this triangle is actually isosceles, which means that both legs have a length a minus b. The line segment on the bottom side of the triangle, connecting this intersection point to the other corner of the triangle, is another tangent to the circular arc, and that means it also has the same length of a minus b. Therefore, the hypotenuse of the newly drawn small right isosceles triangle is b minus the quantity a minus b, which is 2b minus a. And here, something amazing has happened. We used the original right isosceles triangle to create a smaller right isosceles triangle with legs of length a minus b and hypotenuse 2b minus a. By the construction, a minus b is less than b, and 2b minus a is less than a, and both numbers are integers. Moreover, the isosceles triangle implies that 2 times the quantity a minus b squared is equal to the quantity 2b minus a squared. And this implies that the square root of 2 is equal to 2b minus a divided by a minus b. But notice that this leaves us in the same position we started with. We can repeat the process, creating an infinite list of decreasing positive integer ratios. Sweep out one side of the triangle as a radius, creating a circular arc, splitting the hypotenuse into two pieces, and then create the sub-right isosceles triangle, zoom in, and repeat again. If we keep repeating this process, we keep creating smaller and smaller right isosceles triangles with integer side lengths. But we can't do this forever. You cannot have an infinite list of positive decreasing integers. To recap, if there were a right isosceles triangle with legs of length b and hypotenuse of length a with a and b integers, then there would be a smaller right isosceles triangle with the same property. That means there would be a smaller right isosceles triangle with integer leg lengths and integer hypotenuse. And the existence of such a triangle allows us to produce an infinite descent of positive integers, which is a contradiction. Therefore, the square root of 2 cannot be rational and must be irrational. A similar geometric argument works to prove that the square root of n squared plus 1 and the square root of n squared minus 1 are both irrational when n is a positive integer greater than 1. By using these right triangles, one with legs of length 1 and n and hypotenuse of square root of n squared plus 1, and the other with legs of length 1 and square root of n squared minus 1 and hypotenuse of length n. Can you verify the details? If we investigate the visual proof that the square root of 2 is irrational a little bit more, we can get an interesting deeper result about number theory related to the square root of 2 and its approximations. When we investigated the proof, we saw that if there were such a right isosceles triangle, then we could replace the numerator a with the number 2b minus a, and the denominator b with the number a minus b. So we can think of this as a backwards recurrence relation, where a sub n minus 1 is 2 times bn minus a n, and bn minus 1 is equal to an minus bn. And then we can use these two equations to solve for an and bn. First of all, an minus 1 plus an is 2 times bn, and bn minus 1 minus an is negative bn. When we add these two equations together, we see that bn is equal to an minus 1 plus bn minus 1. Now we use the fact that an equals 2bn minus an minus 1, and we can substitute in our equality for bn to see that an equals 2 times the quantity an minus 1 plus bn minus 1 minus an minus 1. And this simplifies so that an equals an minus 1 plus 2 times bn minus 1. So these two recurrences allow us to build two infinite integer sequences an and bn. If we start with a1 equals 1 and b1 equals 1, 
Here are the two infinite sequences we get. But remember that the recurrence for a came from numerators, and the recurrence for b came from denominators. So if we take ratios of corresponding terms from a and b, we get an infinite list of rational numbers, 1 over 1, 3 over 2, 7 over 5, and so on. What's interesting about this infinite list of rational numbers is that each of these numbers gets closer and closer to the square root of 2. That is, this infinite sequence of rationals converges to square root of 2. These rational numbers are known as the convergence of square root of 2, and they give the best rational approximations to the square root of 2. So I like this visual proof that the square root of 2 is irrational using the right isosceles triangle, because it not only proves that the square root of 2 is irrational, it also gives more number theoretic information about the convergence, or the numbers that approximate the square root of 2 the best. This visual proof appeared in the American Mathematical Monthly in an article by Tom Apostle. Check out the description for links to the original.